I'm Beth Marlis, Vice President at Musicians Institute. Thanks so much for speaking with me today. I have worked at MI for 29 years, and it's been really a great, great experience, a blast. I've had a lot of fun all this time. So a little bit about the history of the school. You probably know that we were founded by Howard Roberts, and also in part Tommy Tedesco was there in the early days. These two guys were the premier studio musicians in Los Angeles. They played on all the sessions in Capitol Records and Paramount. And so I tell you this because they were part of this group called the Wrecking Crew that made almost every television show and movie and lots and lots of records back in the old days. Really important studio musicians. And that's the, the history of MI, that's our DNA. That's really who we are, is that we come from the recording studio and we come from people who can play any style and any kind of music and who were really true professionals. So I'm really proud of MI because that's where we were born. We really came out of this very elite group of studio musicians. So even today, as MI is 39 years old now, we still have that in our heart and our soul. Um, that's where we came from. And many schools around the world have copied us or tried to copy us, but you just can't because we're here in Hollywood for a very good reason. It's a special place in the world and our beginnings are very, very special and our history is something we're really proud of. We started out as GIT, Guitar Institute of Technology, 1977 was when we started out. And um, then the next program that came in, I believe, was the Bass Institute, BIT, and PIT, the Percussion Institute. I'm not sure which one of those were first. Maybe they came out at the same time. But that was after a couple of years. So um, then since that time, now we've, of course, added a vocal program. We've added a keyboard program. I'm going to give you the wrap real quick, okay? We've added music business programs. We've added a guitar building school. We've added an independent artist program. We added a bachelor's degree program. We've added, I'm probably forgetting something important. We've added, um, actually, we're going to add a DJ program, believe it or not. And so some of the programs that we offer are a full bachelor's degree, but some of them are really short, like six months. Some of them, oh, audio post-production might be three months. Um, and the most popular of all is an 18-month program. That's where most of the students study. But what's cool about MI is we started with that GIT program, Guitar Institute. But now you could come to school and major in guitar or focus on guitar and then add on maybe six months of audio engineering. You could learn how to be an engineer so you can kind of create these modular programs for yourself, which is the way modern musicians and the industry works. It's multitasking, it's learning a lot of different um, skill sets all at once. So MI has really grown up from being just GIT to really a full music school in so many ways. So it's been a great evolution. Um, I would say guitar, of course. Yes, always. World's most popular instrument, right? So it, it has remained, um, from day one, always the most popular program. But there's some other programs, like, oh, I forgot the drum program. Did I mention that? Yes, I did. You know, there's, there's programs over the years that come and go, and I think that we see growth in areas like audio engineering, an independent artist program, and we even have a media scoring kind of a major and composition major in our bachelor's program. So all of these different programs, they all kind of, you know, contribute to this great atmosphere. But if I were to rank them, I guess, in terms of popularity, well, I'm a guitar player. So of course, the guitar program is most popular, but statistically, it is still number one. And I'm glad about that. I think that it's still about 70% domestic, so U.S. citizens, 
and probably the majority of them probably come from California, I would imagine. That's still true. Um, and then 30% international. And again, over the 29 years that I've been around, there were periods of time where it seemed like there were a lot of students that came from a certain part of the world, like Sweden, or there were a lot of Japanese students, or there were a lot of Korean students. And now we're seeing more students from China, and I think India, and it shifts around um, based on you know politics and monetary fluctuations and all kinds of factors. Um, but that's what makes MI so special, is I think really the international students really make us a world-renowned, world-class school because we pull in so many parts of the world. It's not just a local thing, and I think that's one of our real strengths, actually. Um, I would say for every student, whether you're coming from a, from another country or you're local, the more preparation that you have, the more that maybe you've studied privately or you've had some other education, the better you take advantage of your experience here. So I think that's true for everyone. But when you come from another country, you know, we have actually international offices of international student support here in the school. We recognize it's a, a challenge. We help you find a place to live. We help you adapt to the culture. Um, we're really there to support our international students because they really are so important to our environment and the quality of the education here so that everybody can interact and, you know, that it really is a, a community that's a world community. So if you're coming from China, you're coming from Hong Kong, you're coming from wherever, Russia or Africa or what have you, we want to make sure that you have a place to live, that you feel comfortable, that you've adapted, and that during your entire education, we're here to support you. So we're proud of that. We've really learned how to do that pretty well. What kind of school is this school exactly? It's, it's everything. It's all styles, any kind of contemporary music that you're interested in. And what's kind of, well, beautiful, for lack of a better word, is if you come to school and you only want to pursue your passion and your passion happens to be blues and that's all you want to do, you're entirely supported to do that. Yes, you have to learn your musicianship skills, your theory, your ear training, your reading, what have you, if you're a performer, a player. Um, but then you're not forced to have to learn other styles. But the flip side is if you want to try everything, if you want to experiment, you want to do some jazz or country or R&B or death metal or whatever it is, pop music, you're absolutely encouraged to pursue all of that. And it's all here. It's like a giant supermarket. So it's not really one kind of school. It's all kinds of schools. <laughs> <laughs> did we did we produce too many musicians? Well, um, I think probably we have about thirty thousand alumni now. <laughs> so I look at it. I, I, I'm not really exaggerating. To me, it's one big tribe. It's this whole big family, and um, we're often running into each other, like hiring each other for jobs in the studio or on tour or in the business or being a music supervisor or playing in a band together. So I see it as an advantage. The more graduates we have, the better. Not everyone's going to be a rock star. It's just not possible. But if we have more musicians who understand and are educated and have this great experience, then I think we're a lot closer to world peace, actually. So the more, the better, because I think we really have changed the world. I think MI is successful um, and has had this amazing track record because it's authentic, because the people who teach here are the real deal. This is not uh, a university per se. It's, it's people who are in the industry from the early days of Howard Roberts and Tommy Tedesco when we were founded back in the 70s. They were real, real players and they were A-list, they were high level. And even now to, t to today, 39 years later, our faculty, I'm so proud of them because you'll see them on television, you'll hear them on records. They're out there doing it. They're the real deal, they're not 
purely academic. And so I think that's why we're so successful. I credit the faculty. I think the teachers is one pillar and the other pillar are we have fantastic students because they come here, they are passionate, they love this, this is their life. This is not like going to just a regular school where you're studying history. This is what you dream of. So you put those two things together and you have a life-changing experience, which is why I've stuck around all these years because I see it every day and it's the greatest thing to have this happening day after day after day. It's kind of like dreams really do come true here. And so I think MI was the original one. We're the first one for contemporary music. They've tried to copy it, but there's a reason why we're right here in this corner of Hollywood, because also the industry now looks to us, they come to us, they look for our students. Our students get fantastic gigs in very major bands or major studios. You know, they're everywhere. And so we're really proud of who we are. And I hope that our history by you know, virtue of this interview and other areas that people understand that MI has an amazing reputation and that it goes on and never stops growing. The school continues to evolve. And yes, a DJ program. I never thought I'd see the day, but I think it's really cool because music keeps changing and so does MI. So I'm excited for our future. Um, I think that uh, for our main program, you essentially have to be a high school graduate. Um, if you were very smart and you graduated high school and you're 10 years old, maybe we'd make an exception, I don't know. But generally, it, maybe the youngest students are about 17 for our regular programs. And I have seen older students who are retired, maybe successful in business, and they come back because they always wanted to be a vocalist or a keyboard player or um, you know, study audio engineering in the industry studies. So, um, it, you know, there's no limit to it. But one last thing is that we do have a one week program or it's, now it's two weeks every summer. And I think the youngest students are 14. So we're really trying to connect to younger students. And, and I myself um, serve on several boards of directors like Little Kids Rock and other organizations where we're helping kids in the high schools and younger ages to connect and come into MI and know that there's a place where they can study as they grow. So essentially really we're a college. That's really who we are, but we reach out to the younger kids too. <laughs> That's it, baby. Don't get no blues. You're free now. Whoops, you, you, you can chop that last yeah. part. <laughs> you not only learn how to be a great producer or great drummer or guitar player or singer, but you also know how to have a career and how to build it. So this whole office is developed just for that purpose, to support the student's career and their development. So we're here to hook you up to the industry. This is Beth Marlis, Vice President at Musicians Institute, and you're watching musicandmusic.com.